Hello, my name is Jacob and I am a Norse pagan. And after operating the Wisdom of Odin for 18 months, I am still asked the question of, where do I begin with Norse paganism or heathenry? And so I'm making this video to give my biggest piece of advice for people wanting to start this path for the first time. side. Alright, fine, I won't leave you with just that. But really, it is the best advice I can give. I've been changing what I say to people over the last 18 months based on what I have learned along this path and what has been helpful to others and what has been helpful to myself. And it started with this long list of, well, you need to read the Poetic Edda. Oh, you need to watch these videos. You need to listen to this music. You need to watch these TV shows. Um, and it, it just became this long laundry list. And like, while those things can help people, I know the Poetic Edda helped me. I know, you know, researching into the old gods and finding every last scrap of information I can has helped a lot, but nothing has helped as much as becoming more connected to nature. Before starting the Wisdom of Odin, I was not an avid hiker. I did not hike that often, as I've mentioned before in podcasts and I think in previous videos, my family were drive to destination, get back in car and leave. They never actually hiked. And so to come to places like this was unheard of as I grew up. And I really didn't start doing things like this until I became, I think, 23 or 24 when I started following the pagan path. And now that I'm deep in this and this is basically my entire life, I mean, it is my entire life, I couldn't imagine living without views like this on a regular basis. And I find that when I speak to people that feel disconnected from the gods, it's because they don't come to places like this or they don't have access to places like this, which I understand. But find places like this more often than um, I believe taking a pilgrimage to nature or into beautiful scenic views like this or just to uh, walk outside wherever you can find it will help you so much along the way, especially when you feel that disconnection. Um, as my previous video about a week ago or two weeks ago, whatever it is, um, on digital minimalism, I talk about how our smartphones are distracting and how they keep us from doing things like this. Or even when we're here, they make us focus on the picture the social media, or we're still looking at these things while we hike. That is not how you should do things. If you truly want to connect to the gods and connect to this faith, I believe it is so important to go outside undistracted and truly just let nature guide you. Like, let me build a scenario for you. Let's say we're 10,000 years ago, living in a village of 50, 60 people. The nearest village is 50, 60 people, you know, a few miles away. You don't talk to them, you trade with them semi often, but that's basically your world. And the concept of the gods is more loose. And so when you go outside, you just start getting inspired by things. You get inspired to climb that next hill or explore that creek or follow that creek to the next river. Or, you know, you feel inspired by an area and thankful, or you get an, an, an idea and inspiration. And then you go back. And then you go back to your tribe, your village, and you talk to the people there around a fire and you say, wow, I had a crazy experience outside. And I started you know, feeling this energy. I felt inspired, I'm gonna do this now. I'm gonna go climb that hill. And then all of a sudden you became the first person in your village to climb that hill, but all of a sudden you have a story of, oh yeah, so-and-so climbed that hill. He was inspired by something. And then those stories start coming together from that village to the next town over. Your own stories start merging with theirs and all of a sudden people start seeing the common threads of, wow, people being, are inspired to do things. Or maybe they're with specific locations, like, wow, people are inspired by that mountain or by that stream and more people start having experiences and stories. And that's when I think that the gods started getting names. People started naming those things. People started acknowledging, oh, that over there, that's a spirit, a spirit lives there. And then before you know it, it's like, wow, you know, there's spirits that live here that I feel inspired. And people started sharing stories that I feel inspired by this, but this, oh, that's Odin. Oh, that's Frey, that's Freya. You know, and those names started becoming, you know, more and more real. Now, of course, these, you know, happened over hundreds and thousands of years of these combined stories of people being inspired and people being, you know, drawn to certain things. And that became mythology. And it ultimately, it becomes like chicken or the egg kind of stuff, like which came first, the mythology or the people, you know? So if like the people came first, this is how it probably developed as the stories of inspiration that still guide us today. 
And then, you know, if it was the mythology first, like if the gods were here first and truly created us as beings themselves, and then it, you know, it becomes, oh, we got the stories from those direct connections from the past. Again, I think that would be really cool if that was true. But I think as we experience them now, as we don't really expect the ancient alien gods to come back, and maybe they will, that'd be really cool still. But if they do, that's awesome. But I think for the most part, how we experience the gods is in places like this, is in the stories that we connect with, you know, places of beauty, places of nature, feeling the spirits of the land. But also when we don't necessarily have the land to connect us, we're still inspired by those gods, by those presences. And so I think those gods that were named thousands of years ago are being called to again. and. Ultimately, you know, yes, we're connecting to a presence that we call Odin or or Freya or Thor, but those are just the names that our ancestors gave those presences and the stories that are tied to them give them life and gives us a backbone and a foundation and a history to worship and honor those gods. Um, and same thing with the land, you know, I talked about this in my North, you know, my North American paganism video where the land is different here, you know, most likely the pre-Christian Scandinavian Germanic ancestors were not right here venerating the land but I am, and I can still venerate this land. I can still hail this beautiful view and acknowledge the fact that I'm like two feet away from just death. Like if I fell right now, let's see if you can see this. Look at that. Like that's where I'm standing. Oh, let me put you back. So yes, I honor the fact that nature could take me at any moment, one misstep and I'm dead. And that's something I think we have to honor because as people of this world, man conquered nature hundreds of years ago and we don't fear it as much as we used to, at least in, not in the modern civilization. And so when we as people that have conquered nature come back out here and say, no, I am equal to you, I think that really means something and that'll resonate with the land and the hills here and I believe it'll guide you. And this brings me to the final point, which is something that I've been bringing up a lot lately, is that I believe when people come into Norse paganism for the first time, I truly believe that they are looking for the Christian similarities or the Christian substitutions. So Christianity is obviously monotheistic. Now, and of course, if you go to Catholicism, there's a little bit more, you know, praying to saints and things like that. But for the most part, it's about God. It's about Jesus and the Holy Spirit, all those things. I'm a horrible Christian, I apologize. I mean, <laughs> I apologize if I offend anyone with my lack of knowledge of Christianity. And the majority of people that follow Christianity are highway people. Like, I feel like Christianity is a highway. Like you get on the highway and it just stops along the way or you stop at a Cracker Barrel and the, the spirituality that is life and you talk about God and wow, it's so efficient to get to the afterlife now. You know, think about before when it wasn't efficient to get to the afterlife. And then here we are as pagans going into the woods like, I don't need that highway. I'm gonna find my way. I'm gonna walk there. I'm gonna follow old trails. I'm gonna follow deer trails. I'm gonna follow paths laid by my ancestors. Or when I get inspired by the gods, I'm gonna follow them into the woods. We don't want that highway. Which is why I'm so against formalized, heathenry, formalized, also true, is because it starts laying down that paved road again. I left Christianity to get away from that paved road because I wanted to go to places like this and get lost and then feel inspired when it's like, oh, I'm getting beckoned to go over there or wow, that is beautiful. I'm going to go look at that because that's what I think life is about. The destination at the end, we'll figure it out when we get there. But life is about this. Life is about the path that we lay out for ourselves. And that when we run into people in those woods, we say, hey, wow, tell me about your experiences. And it all goes back to those ancient days, to those ancient villages, when people would go out and have experiences. And then when the communities came together or when they came together with the people in their community and they shared those stories. And that is how I believe mythology and the sagas of our people were created. So yes, monotheistic religion, highway. But also we have to remember that paganism in itself does not transition. You can't take paganism, Norse paganism, heathenry, and then blueprint it onto Christianity. It doesn't work. And I think we've seen examples of that not working in a lot of modern Asatru movements is they just take heathenry and then filter it through and make it a weird form of Christianity again. And I just don't, I need places like this. And when I say I want to build a hall, I'm not talking about building a church. I'm just talking about a place where the community can come together and share their stories. We still go outside and worship the gods. I mean, we might build, you know, structures and temples to the deities themselves, but as far as like a church service, like, no, that's not going to happen. Um, so I think that's, you know, one of the things is the difference between animism and a monotheistic religion are quite different. And that transition from monotheism to animism is quite difficult to understand. But I already kind of touched on this video, one with the paved highway thing, monotheism is a highway to death. And I feel like animism is an exploration 
to death. Because ultimately, we, we are born and we die. That is the only thing we are promised in this life. We will be born on a day and we are fated to die. And some people might take that, well, what's the point in living? To me, that's the point in living is that, okay, everything between those two points is for me, is for me to live. And so I'm going to live it to the fullest and I'm going to share ideas, grow further in my own self, but also grow closer to this, grow closer to the beauty of the world. I'm gonna duck down, look at that, look at that. That's why I'm alive. So all of those things, the pathway that is once monotheism, that is the ultra highway to death, to the paths that we follow, to explore the world we live in, where the spirits guide us to them, where the gods show us you need to go this way, we, we're, we're, where we ourselves meet up with others and share the stories and adventures we've had, to the removal of monotheistic ideas and the implementation of animistic ideas, all of these things wrapped in together to me go in those two words. Go outside. So folk, anytime you feel disconnected from the gods or disconnected from your path, remember that you're feeling disconnected because you're meant to find your own way. Yes, I can show you a path. Yes, I can say, hey, I went this way up this hill to find the top of that mountain. And you can follow that trail. You still have to walk it though. At the end of the day, we still have to walk the trail. You can read about the trail and learn about the trail as much as you want. And the gods can say, hey, there's a trail right there. But you still have to walk that path. And so, the only way you can do that is by listening, by observing, and by exploring. And truly, I believe this is the best advice I can have for someone starting this path, or for someone that feels lost on this path. Go outside. So folk, until the hall, go outside and skull.